The Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino Program ensures that the most vulnerable sectors and communities are served. One of these are the Indigenous Peoples. Who are the Indigenous Peoples? According to Republic Act No. 8371 or the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act of 1997, the IPs refer to a group of people or homogeneous societies identified by self-ascription and ascription by others who have continuously lived as organized community on communally bounded and defined territory and who have under claims of ownership since time immemorial occupied, possessed, and utilized such territories sharing common bonds of language, customs, traditions, and other distinctive cultural traits, or who have, through resistance to political, social, and cultural inroads of colonization, non-indigenous religions and cultures became historically differentiated from the majority of Filipinos. Most of these vulnerable IPs are those living in geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas, also called as GIDA. They are living in GIDA communities with marginalized population, physically and socioeconomically separated from the mainstream society, and characterized by absence of access to roads or reside in hard-to-reach areas, absence of or limited opportunity for development, absence of or limited areas to social services, particularly health and education, insufficiency of food, limiting environments such but not limited to discriminatory policies, norms, and situations that inhibit full exercise of their rights. Due to the dynamics of the indigenous peoples, the Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino Program implements the Enhanced Support Services Interventions or ESSI. Enhanced Support Services Interventions provide supplementary interventions to the indigenous peoples to be able to meet their basic needs such as food, water, shelter and clothing and help them to eventually improve their level of well-being. The support services interventions progressively address the complex and multifaceted concerns of the Pantawid IP beneficiaries and their communities. Thus, it is also vital that the beneficiaries are involved in the community planning, in the implementation, and in the monitoring and evaluation of the ESSI. It primarily engages the beneficiaries in finding solutions to their difficulties toward empowerment. Following the community organizing approach and convergence strategy to ensure community-driven development and genuine community empowerment. The Enhanced Support Services Interventions projects for IPs are the Eco-Cultural Livelihood Assistance and Income Generating Projects, the Community and Youth Development Projects, the Small Scale Community Projects, and the Alternative Family Homes for IPs in geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas enrolled in high school and pregnant women. The Ecocultural Livelihood Assistance and Income Generating Projects are intended to increase the economic capacities of the target beneficiaries. These include provision of capital assistance for small income generating projects and competency building for livelihood, for skills training and education to enhance their skills to operate ecocultural livelihood. Also, assistance for pre-employment shall be provided to qualified beneficiaries as augmentation for expenses in securing employment documents and transportation. This project aims to develop the capacity of beneficiaries in engaging to income-generating projects or to seek employment leading to a more stable source of income for their families. This project will be provided to eligible beneficiaries in the absence of regular livelihood programs or projects of the local and national government. The Community and Youth Development Intervention aims to strengthen the participation of beneficiaries in the conduct of community development activities. This include values formation trainings, 
leadership trainings, and other development activities aimed at enhancing the knowledge, skills, and attitude of the community members towards empowerment. These trainings and development activities will help them in terms of managing their resources, advocating for their needs, and in assisting them to secure important documents. Small-scale community project aims to address the identified community needs and or felt needs of the beneficiaries within the PUROC or CITU level. Areas eligible of this intervention are those that do not have access to similar projects from the local and national government. High priority shall be given to projects that aims to address problems pertaining to food, water, sanitation, farm-to-market road, disaster, and small infrastructure. These projects include such as but not limited to small access infrastructure that will help the beneficiaries comply with the conditions of the program. This will also provide support for their economic activities. They will also be given opportunity to have access to basic services such as but not limited to communal water supply, sanitation facilities, risk reduction projects, rehabilitation, and a community kitchen to address food insecurity. For this project, there should be a minimum of five members in a group per qualified Pantolid household. A maximum amount of 25,000 pesos shall be granted per household. The total maximum amount that can be approved for the small-scale project is 375,000 pesos. The small-scale community-initiated projects will serve as a venue to strengthen the capacities of the community in having ownership of the project. This intervention can lead to a self-determined development while ensuring the preservation of culture and tradition. Also, it can serve as means for strengthening relationship because the whole community will benefit from it. The Alternative Family Home aims to provide house rental subsidy for the qualified Pantoid beneficiaries in order to ensure compliance with the conditions of the program in coordination with the National Housing Authority and the concerned local government units. Who are qualified for the Alternative Family Home? First, the IPs in GDA beneficiaries enrolled in high school who are monitored son or daughter grandson or granddaughter needing temporary lodging near their schools. Per student will be given a maximum subsidy of 20,000 pesos per school year. Second, the pregnant IP women in Jida who belong to the succeeding pregnancy and having pregnant status in the program information system needing a halfway house near the birthing facility. The grant shall serve as a one-time rental subsidy with a maximum amount of 4,500 pesos per month for two months. The ESSI projects shall supplement and complement the cash grants received by the IPs for them to meet their basic needs and for them to be ready to comply with the conditions of the program. Also, it will ensure full observance of the program safeguards specific for IPs. The ESSI projects intend to support the IPs and its communities to an improved quality of life and empowerment. Through the Enhanced Support Services Interventions, the Pantawid Mamilyang Pilipino Program guarantees that the most vulnerable indigenous peoples, especially those living in geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas, are reached and served.